Thank you for clicking on this video. I welcome you back. In our previous lesson, we learned on the classical conditioning by Pavlov and Watson. In today's lesson, we will learn the operant conditioning by B.F. Skinner. In this video, we will learn what is operant conditioning, the experiment done by Skinner, or so we call the Skinner box, the types of reinforcement, the types of schedule of reinforcement, and lastly, the education implications. What is operant conditioning? To learn the operant conditioning, let us look back at the background. B.F. Skinner, he propagated the operant conditioning theory of learning, and therefore he is known as the father of operant conditioning. Now, his theory was based on earlier psychologist's work, that is E.L. Thorndike, if you can remember, the trial and error theory of learning. Here, Skinner, he was more amused in the law of effects. Therefore, he began a series of experiments on the animals to find the consequences of the rewards in repeating and maintaining behavior. Now, after a series of experiments, he introduced a new term into the law of effects, that is reinforcement. Coming back to the question, what is operant conditioning? Operant conditioning is a learning process in which an action or a response is made more probable or likely to happen again or more frequent by reinforcement. Now to understand this in a very simple term is to know this principle. So what is this principle? If an action or a behavior has a pleasant consequence, it is more likely to happen again or to be repeated again. But if an action or behavior has an unpleasant consequences, it is less likely to be repeated. So according to this theory, behavior or action which is reinforced tends to be repeated and strengthened but behavior which is not reinforced tends to die out and weakened. Now let us look into the experiment by Skinner, or so we call the Skinner box. B.F. Skinner, he conducted a series of experiments with animals like rats and pigeon. You must have heard about the Skinner box. Now, Skinner box, it was a specially designed apparatus. It was actually a modified form of the puzzle box, which was used by Thorndike in his experiment with cats. Now, this Skinner box, it was a soundproof box. It consisted of a grid floor, a lever, a foot cup, and a system of light or sound produced at the time of delivering food in the foot cup. Now we know the Skinner box is a soundproof box and what it all consisted of. The question is, how was it arranged? The Skinner box, it was arranged in such a way that there will be a lever inside the box. So when a hungry rat goes and presses the lever, the feeder mechanism will be activated. When the feeder mechanism is activated, a light or a special sound will be produced, after which a small pellet of food will come out of it into the food cup. To record all this observation of the experiment, the lever was also connected with a recording system that produces a graphical tracing of the lever pressed. With all this arrangement, now for a real experiment, Skinner placed a hungry rat in the box. The rat was moving around the box and accidentally pressed the lever in a certain way which resulted to a click sound or light produced and then the appearance of food pellet. The red randomly press the lever again and gets the reward, that is the food. After some time, it realized that there is a connection between pressing lever, the click sound or light, and then the reward, that is the food. The red was rewarded for each proper pressing of the lever, therefore it realized that it will be rewarded with food and ultimately, the red learned the art of pressing the lever. Talking about the rewards, let us look into the types of reinforcement. The first is positive reinforcement. What is positive reinforcement? 
In a positive reinforcement, a behavior or response is strengthened by rewards, leading to the repetitions of desired behavior. For example, we have seen the Skinner experiment in the Skinner box where the hungry rat press the lever and gets its food as its rewards. Seeing the rewards, the rat repeated the action again and again, which was the desired behavior. Another common example of positive reinforcement in a classroom scenario will be a teacher praising the child for doing his homework. Here the teacher used praise as a reward so that he will encourage the child to continue doing his homework even in the days to come. The second is negative reinforcement. Negative reinforcement is the termination or removal of an unpleasant state following an action. It strengthens behavior because it removes unpleasant experience. Skinner showed how negative reinforcement work by placing a rat in his Skinner box and then subjecting it to unpleasant electric current. As the rat was moving about with discomfort, it accidentally pressed the lever and immediately the electric current went off. After some time, the rat learned to remove the discomfort by pressing the lever, thus removing an unpleasant situation by doing an action. Another example of negative reinforcement in a classroom scenario will be not giving homework to the students for actively participating in the classroom activity. Here the award is no homework to the students. As homework is often perceived as something negative, the teacher imposes no homework to the student so that he will encourage the students to actively participate even in the upcoming classroom activities. The third is punishment. Punishment is the opposite of reinforcement. Now, negative reinforcement and punishment can be very confusing because it looks very similar, but punishment is adding something negative to discourage undesirable behavior, whereas negative reinforcement is removing something negative to encourage desirable outcome. Example of punishment will be spanking a child for not doing his or her homework. As we already know, positive reinforcement and negative reinforcement is very important for a child to train and to learn a desirable behavior. But we can't keep on praising or rewarding the child forever and every time whenever they do something good. Yet the good effect is still important, that's when reinforcement schedule comes in. Now we will look into the different reinforcement schedule. 1. Fixed Interval Reinforcement Schedule In this schedule, the child is rewarded for a response made only after a set interval of time. For example, a child being rewarded after every 1 hour, 2 hours, 4 hours, 1 day, 2 days, etc. 2. Fixed Ratio Reinforcement Schedule in this schedule, the reinforcement is given after a fixed number of response. For example, a child is being rewarded after answering every 5 questions or after every 10 questions. 3. Variable Reinforcement Schedule When reinforcement is given at varying intervals of time or after a varying number of responses, it is called Variable Reinforcement Schedule. In this case, reinforcement is irregular or it is random. The individual does not know when he is going to be rewarded and consequently he remains motivated throughout the learning experience or process. Lastly, let us look into the education implication. Number one, the principle of operating conditioning can be successfully applied for modifying our behavior. The second is the theory advocates the avoidance of punishment for unlearning the undesirable behavior as punishment increases aggression, fears, and does not necessarily guide towards desired behavior. The third is the theory of operating conditioning also contributed a lot towards the development of teaching machines as well as programmed learning. So that is all in this video. Thank you so much for watching.